Hey guys, welcome back to my Standard of the World series. A uh, little update today, pretty short video, but basically what we're gonna go over is, uh, if you remember from my last video, I talked about the Hellgate Bridge and creating a little pond underneath that. So we're just gonna show you how we're gonna create that basic uh, starting point for that pond. And then we're also gonna do the final layout uh, covering uh, today. So we'll show you how that's all ready to go. And we're getting pretty close to then permanently uh, getting track fastened down and uh, starting our wiring on the layout. So um, we just got a couple little things we have to do yet. So just a quick update and uh, you'll see what progress we made today. So let's do this. Okay, to, so to create this little pond underneath the uh, bridge, um, we're going to do just a very simple um, uh, technique underneath here using the realistic water from uh, Woodland Scenics, but I don't want to get too detailed because remember this whole layout is supposed to be like a toy-like layout, but the bridge needs to span something and since I'm not like spanning something uh, over a upper level or something like that, I just thought I would do this. So what I did basically is with the bridge in place, I just drew an outline here, just made a little curve and this would be the front the bridge would actually be covering all this piece here. So it's just going to look like a little water sticking out from underneath the bridge. And um, I just use an oscillating tool to cut that out. Now luckily, just by coincidence, because I used two layers of three-quarter plywood, it works out perfect. So I just cut down to the first layer. And now I have a base, sort of a, an indentation here to actually pour the water in and everything. So that actually works out really well. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down the green carpet now next as the next phase before I do this. And then once the carpet's down, I'm gonna trim it around here. And then I may uh, just push it uh, down a little over the edge. And then the uh, this all in the bottom here will be painted like a really bright blue. Like uh, I want it to be really blue, blue water. And then we will, uh, you know, fill it with the realistic water, let that dry. And then there may be just a tiny bit of uh, edge work and stuff like that to do uh, some rocks or something like that around the edge or something uh, to, to clean that up. And that'll be it. It'll be as simple as that. So if I take the bridge and I put it back sort of where it would be somewhere out here. You can see what it's going to look like, right? You can see it's going to look like there's some water underneath it and it'll look a little more realistic than the bridge just sitting flat on uh, the ground, right? And so I think that'll look pretty cool and that's all I need. Now, I couldn't bring it out any further because there's going to be a track that's almost cl very close to that, so for the inner loop, so, but that will work out for this portion right here. So that's it. That's how I'm going to handle this uh, little pond underneath the bridge. And uh, the next step is going to be actually putting down, now that I know what my track plan is going to be, the green carpet and getting that all down. And then once the carpet is down, then I will finish this pond out or this little lake underneath the bridge. And then the bridge is the first piece that gets mounted on the layout because that's the key piece that everything goes off of uh, from both sides. And that will <clears throat> give me... Once it's centered there and all the track is joined to it, that'll give me my outer loop. Once the outer loop is finished and, and uh, screwed down, then we can do the inner loop because then we can position it exactly centered in, in where we need it to be so nothing is like banging into each other when the trains are going around the curves and stuff like that. So, so that's the next step. So next step is I got to actually clear all this track off of here and then put the carpet down and I'll show you what kind of carpet that is and you know really uh, how I'm going to fasten it and then we are going to do sort of another layer on the uh, bench work for the road bed so a typical standard gauge toy train look is a, a gray uh, track bed underneath the uh, track and then you have the green carpet so and that's what we're going for so so we'll, we'll get to that uh, in the next uh, step and we're ready to go. So let me go start uh, getting prepped for that and then we'll come back. All right, 
right, so our next step is to get the carpet down on the top of the layout. And um, I found this uh, really uh, nice, inexpensive stuff at Lowe's. It's called Eco Rug. It's an indoor outdoor carpet. It's green. It's got a kind of the uh, right amount of um, texture on it. And uh, it's, it's not too thick. It's uh, got a little bit of thickness, but it's not overly thick. And um, like I said, it, it comes in these easy six by eight rolls, which is perfect for me. I only needed two rolls to cover the whole layout. I'll just have one seam and, um, you know, really inexpensive, which was kind of nice. So it's always great to save money, but the color was perfect. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to put this down first and then we'll uh, talk about how we're going to handle the road bed color, which is going to be sort of a felt gray type of thing. So let me show you that. Kind of got uh, this stuff right here off of Amazon, and it's sort of like a nice felt gray. It's got a little gray black in it and stuff like that. But this is what we're going to use underneath the track itself, um, and that will give it sort of that classic standard gauge look with the gray road bed underneath it and then the green carpet as the main thing so that's what we're going to use so first thing we got to do is basically just lay this out um, and then the only thing we have to do on this corner right here is just cut uh, inside that 45 angle otherwise it just goes right to the edge so we'll start at the edge here and just roll it out to the back and then we'll use a sharp hobby knife and then and get that cut and then once we have that done, we'll cut around that new little pond that we created back there underneath the Hellgate. And we'll get our piece ready to go. And then once we have it all cut, we're just going to use a spray glue. Uh, and we're just going to spray it on the um, platform itself. And then just slowly roll it out. Just make sure it goes down. Um, and then that should be it. And that's really all we need. You don't have to go crazy with it because the track is going to hold everything down plus the buildings and everything else. So, And that's all we're going to use. So um, let me get this, uh, basically these pieces cut and in place and we'll show you what it looks like before we glue it down. All right, so there we got it. I put the carpet down. I got it cut to the edges and everything. And I just rolled back about a foot of it. I'm using some of this... Um, Pro Stick 65 I got from Scenic Express a while ago. I used it on my old gauge layout, so I have some extra here. And I'm just spraying it right on the wood here. And you just leave it a minute to tack up, and that's all you need. We don't need this to be any kind of super permanent bond. We just need it tacky so it stays in place because the tracks are going to basically hold everything down. So, And that's all we have to do. So you can see I just sort of sprayed some strips of it here waiting for it to tack up and then we're going to roll this piece back we'll get it all tight against the edges here and then what we're going to do is start from the other side we'll roll it back and then just keep going about a foot at a time rolling it out making it nice and smooth make sure there's no bubbles in it or anything like that and that's it and then we'll have this side done and then we can uh, move all this track and junk over here and then finish uh, on the other side which that one's easier it's just a, a rectangular piece there's no 45 like this so then once we get all that done then we'll cut out the little lake that we made in the back there so and that's where we're at so let me get this all mounted and we'll show you the final result all right guys here we are there's the uh, final uh, carpet finish so we got it all uh, down and just a little adhesive holding it down there um, and then we just put the track back on, got everything sort of organized, and that's kind of what the final track plan is going to look like. So uh, I actually only have to cut one little piece of track right here. There's a half section that's just a little bit too long, so we just need to cut that and we'll be good. But this, uh, this uh, carpet is really nice. Uh, it's got a pretty good uh, texture on it. Um, and it doesn't shed, which is really nice. Some, sometimes, you know, you buy cheap carpets, they shed. But this actually doesn't. I was crawling on the uh, layout earlier, getting all this stuff on here in my sweats, and nothing actually came off. No green fiber. So that's awesome. And it's really lightweight, easy to use, and it was super cheap. So, um, yeah, great. Uh, if you need some uh, green type of indoor outdoor carpet, go to Lowe's and 
just get one of the ones that's already pre-made there in six by eight uh, rolls and just uh, lay it down. It works really well. So this is uh, pretty much it as far as that goes. And we're almost getting close to being able to uh, fasten down the track and getting all the joints and seams tightened up and everything and start our wiring. But we do have to start on the one last piece, which is that little lake I was talking about underneath the Hellgate Bridge. So uh, we just have to finish that first. So I got to get that inside there painted. I'm going to do a really like uh, blue, blue, bright blue in there and then uh, put the real realistic water in there and, and stuff. And I think that that should be it. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to need anything else, but we'll see. Uh, and the reason is, is because the Hellgate Bridge is the center of the um, track. So that gets put right in the center and then all the track goes out from there uh, to put it in the right position on the layout. So it's not too close to the window and everything lays exactly the way I want it to. So the help gate bridge is my starting point. So once I get that lake done, I get the bridge down, then I'm ready to start actually adhering track to the layout. And then once the outer loop is all adhered and I have everything finished and I know exactly where it's going to be, then we will do the inner loop because then I can move it left and right between the two uh, ends of the outer loop so that basically I make the same distance right here between these two tracks on both sides. So the maximum clearance I can get on both sides. And then also um, the other direction uh, on the layout left to right so that I can get max clearance right here which is my tight area. That's the tightest area between the inner and outer uh, loops. So, and I could move this actually up a little bit here. You see, I could get it actually a little bit closer to the uh, the lake. So, but until I get the outer loop permanently fastened down, I don't want to do anything with the inner loop. So that's all we have to do. And yeah, that's it. And then we can start talking about um, our feeds and wiring and um, how we're going to handle both conventional and command control uh, engines on here because we do want to be able to do both. Uh, just because it's standard gauge and there's a lot of engines that are just going to be conventional. Uh, so, uh, and uh, oh, TMCC and DCS, by the way, so both systems because uh, I have the uh, trains made uh, for Lionel by Mike that were DCS, and then I also have the ones Lionel made themselves that had TMCC in them. So, we have to make sure we have both control systems, but. Yeah, that's pretty much it, and uh, yeah, it worked out really well. I'm pretty happy with it, so I don't want to go crazy again with this layout. And remember, my whole goal from the beginning was this was going to be a toy layout, right? Not a scale layout, so we're not doing scale details, right? It's not going to be like a high rail where we're just doing all these intricate details. I want it to look like a bunch of toys uh, put on a carpet, and that's what it's going to look like, so... All right, that's it, guys, for uh, this episode. Uh, we'll get the lake finished, and then uh, once that's done, we'll uh, start uh, getting the track fastened down, and then we'll uh, come back and show you how we're going to feed um, the wiring for the layouts for both the uh, power feeds and also the uh, command control systems. Hey guys, well I hope you enjoyed the video on the little uh, cutout here for the pond we're going to make and the covering of the uh, green carpet for the layout and kind of what the track plan is finalized and going to look like so you get an idea of uh, where we're headed and um, that's it for today's video. So next time we'll be talking about uh, finishing the pond, uh, laying down the track permanently. We got some... Uh, uh, track bed that's going to go underneath it that we're going to do and then also uh, we'll start on the wiring so pretty exciting stuff coming up and hopefully pretty soon we'll be able to get some trains actually running on these tracks so we're getting close so stay tuned uh, as always uh, thanks for watching make sure you subscribe hit the uh, bell for notification share and i'll see you next time peace guys